Hello, uh, welcome to another video where we are going to be talking about the normal distribution. We're going to be talking about applications of the normal distribution using the Casio FX CG50 calculator uh, to calculate the areas underneath the curve as well as to calculate the value given an area underneath the curve. Uh, I have three main steps that I like to follow with each of these types of questions. First step is to draw a normal curve and shade the indicated area. I'm a very visual person. If I could see something, it usually helps me to understand what it is that we're trying to do. Uh, so having a picture with the indicated area shaded usually helps me to identify what it is we're trying to solve. Second step is to identify if the question wants you to find an area or to find a score. If the question gives you a value and wants you to find the area, we're going to use the NCD function in the Casio calculator. Or if it gives us an area and wants us to find a score, we're going to use the inverse normal or INVN function in the Casio calculator. And then the third step is to read the question and make sure that the answer you find answers the actual question. Example 6.8 says the golf scores for a school team were normally distributed. As soon as you see something that says normally distributed, we know that we can apply the normal distribution picture to it with a mean of 68 and a standard deviation of 3. So I can shade this picture, or I can draw this picture, um, labeling the mean of 68. And then it asks us to find the probability that a randomly selected golf score scored less than 65. All right, so a um, couple things here. First, they want us to find the probability if we are trying to find the probability, or the area, or the proportion, and we are given a value, in this case we're given a, a score of 65, we're going to use the NCD function in the Casio calculator. We know that the area is going to be to the left, because it says less than 65. My apologies center that again. Uh, since it's to the left of 65, we know that we're going to need our lower bound and our upper bound. Well, our upper bound is just going to be 65. Our lower bound technically is going to be negative infinity. We can't type in negative infinity in the calculator, so we're going to use negative 1 times 10 to the 99th. And I'll show how to type this into the calculator. But again, just real quick, uh, we're being asked to find the probability, we're given the, te the, the golf score, so therefore we're going to use the NCD function. There are two ways of getting to the NCD function. The first way is from the run matrix screen, where we can press option, stat, distribution, normal, NCD. But from here, we need to type in a whole bunch of values. Uh, lower bound, upper bound, mean, standard deviation. We need to do that in a certain order. And this doesn't give us that order. However, if I go to the stat option in menu and go to distribution, normal, NCD, <clears throat> um, make sure that we change this to variable. If we are given a whole bunch of values, we can base them off the list, but we're not given a whole bunch of values. Uh, the lower bound we just talked about will be negative 1 times 10 to the 99th power. To type this into the Casio, we're going to use the negative button on the bottom row. Don't use the subtraction button, otherwise you'll get an error. And then we can press x, 10 to the x, and then 9, 9. Our upper bound will be 65. Our standard deviation is 3 from the question. And our mean is 68, again, given in the question. And from here, we will get that the probability of a golfer, a randomly selected golfer, scoring less than 65 will be 0.1587. All right, we will move on to another example here. This example says, 2,000 students took an exam. The scores on the exam have an approximate normal distribution with a mean of 81 
and a standard deviation of 15 points. Part A asks us to calculate the first and third quartile scores for this exam. So uh, let's talk about what this means then. The first quartile and the third quartile. Well, the first quartile is Q1, and it represents the 25th percentile. The 25th percentile says, what score has 25% of the, of the distribution to the left of it? So what score has 25% of the distribution to the left? So we are given percents and being asked to find a test score. Since we're given a percent and being asked to find a test score, we are going to use the inverse norm function in the Casio calculator. Again, given a percent, being asked to find a value, a score. Use inverse norm. Okay, so let's graph this or draw the picture. Mean is 81. The 25th percentile will be somewhere around here, maybe close enough. We know that we want 25% of the graph to the left of this value. So let's go to the calculator. There are two ways of doing this. If you press menu one, again, we can go to option, stat, distribution, normal, inverse norm. But again, there's a bunch of things we need to type in here, like the area, which direction, uh, what's the mean, what's the standard deviation. It's a little bit easier to go to menu two, F5 for distribution, F1 for normal, and then F3 for inverse norm. Make sure that we select variable. And from here, we can choose which direction the tail is being shaded. For the first quartile, or the 25th percentile, we're going to choose a left shading tail. The area, area we want to be 0.25. The standard deviation is 15. And the mean is 81. So we'll type all of those values in and press execute. And we'll find that this test score will be 70.9, 70.88. Now we need to find the third quartile. The third quartile is very similar in that it is the Q3, or 75th percentile, which just means that there are 75% of the data values to the left of this given value. Go through this a little bit faster here. This will have a left tail of 75, or a left shaded region of 0.75. So we can hit um, exit, exit, F5, F1, F3. We can leave this as left, changes to 0.75. Everything else stays the same. And we'll get that the upper value here is 91.1. So those are my two test grades that calculate the, or, or cut off the first quartile and the third quartile, respectively. Part B now asks us to find the middle 80%. The middle 80% of exam scores are between what two values? Well, the middle 80%, I'm going to shade the middle 80% of my graph. Something like this. So that we have 80%. We know that the total area under the curve has to be one. So if my middle 80% is being given, then I know that the two tails must be 20% uh, in total. Since these graphs, these normal distributions, are um, symmetric, we know that um, the two tails will be equal. If we have 20% in the total tails, each region will be 10%. So since we have the area to the left is 0.10 for the lower bound, 
We can just hit exit. We can go through all the other stuff, but I'm just going to go quickly. Uh, the inverse normal is already here because the previous question had inverse normal. So we can change the area to 0.10. The mean and standard deviation are going to stay the same. And we'll get that the lower value is a 61.8. And then from here, we can press exit to find the upper value. We can either change this to 0.9 because the total area to the left of the upper value is 90% or 0.9. to get 100.2. Uh -oh. Sorry about that, I seem to have some uh, small glitch with my OneNote screen, which is what I'm drawing on. Um, so the second way that we could have done this is if we know that the area to the right is 0.10 or 10%, we could also just change this to a right tail using F2 and leaving this as 0.1 as well. <clears throat> Either way, we'll get that the upper value is 100.2. Alright, we have one last example that's got three parts. It says um, a citrus farmer who grows mandarin oranges finds that the diameters of mandarin oranges harvested on his farm follow a normal distribution with a mean diameter of 5.85 centimeters and a standard deviation of 0 0.24 centimeters. Part A says find the probability that a randomly selected mandarin orange from his farm has a diameter larger than 6.0 centimeters. So since the mean is 5.85 has been given, we're going to label the mean of our picture with 5.85. Uh, we want to know what's the probability that the, a randomly selected orange is 6 centimeters or more. So we're going to shade to the right because it says larger than. <clears throat> I now have my visual. Let's go back in and try and figure out what, what function are we going to use in the calculator. Well, we were given the value or the diameter or the score of the orange, which is 6.0, and we are asked to find, we want to find the probability. This is my joke for WTF, want to find. So for this one, we're going to use the NCD function in the calculator. We'll press exit, exit. Uh, back to the stat main page. F5 brings us to the distributions. F1 brings us to the normal distributions, and F2 brings us to NCD. Choose variable, make sure that we're already, we would probably already have it listed this way, uh, but variable is the option we're going to use. Now we need to talk about what the lower and upper values are. The lower value of the shaded region, where the left value is 6, the upper value is technically infinity because this graph extends infinitely in both directions. We can't type infinity into the calculator, but what we can do is type in 1 times 10 to the 99th power as our upper value, which is just some really large number, 1 with 99 zeros, some huge number. So our lower value is 6. Our upper value is 10 to the 99th. We can just hit this x, 10 to the x value, and then 99. Our mean is 5.85. It's given in the question here. And our, oops, I typed that in the wrong spot. This is our standard deviation symbol. Our standard deviation is 0.24. Let me get rid of all this. Our standard deviation is 0.24. And our mean is 5.85. I almost switched up the order. And we get that the probability that a randomly selected orange is greater than 6 is 0.2659 or 2660. That's part A. We've got part B and part C, and then we'll be done. So we know that the mean is 5.85. 
and the standard deviation is 0 0.24. I'm just copying that down before I scroll away from the, the question itself. Uh, part B asks us to find the middle 20% of the mandarin oranges. The middle 20% of the mandarin oranges from this farm have diameters between some lower value and some upper value. Again, I like to try and draw a quick little picture here. If this is the middle 20%, that means that the two tails will both be equal, because it's the middle. 100 minus 20 is 80, and then we cut that in half to have that each tail is 40%. Now the nice thing about the Casio calculator is that we don't really need to worry about it because if we hit menu, number two, brings us to the stat, stat screen, hit F5 for distribution, F1 for normal, and F3 for inverse norm, really quickly, why are we pressing F3 for inverse norm? Well, because we're given a percent or an area or a proportion or a probability. And we are asked to find, we want to find, that's my WTF joke, um, the values we're going to use inverse norm. So uh, within the Casio, we can choose the central area the central area will be exactly what we're looking for. We type in 0.2 as our central area. The standard deviation and the mean stay the same. And we find that the lower value is going to be 5.789 and the upper value is 5.1, sorry, 910 or 911. So um, because the mean is rounded to two place values, I'm going to round this value to two place values as well. 5.79 is the lower value and 5.91 is the upper value. All right, and the last example here says to find the 90th percentile. Remember that the 90th percentile just means the value that has 90% of the distribution to its left. So there's some value way over here that has 90% of the graph to its left. So the mean is again 5.85 and we're trying to figure out what this value is. Since we are given a percent again and we are asked to find the diameter We're going to use the inverse norm again. So F5 distribution, F1 for normal, F3 for inverse norm. Change this to a left shaded area. The area to the left we want to be 0.9 and everything else stays the same. And we'll get that this value is 6.16. So the question says, again, part three or step three from earlier says to reread the question, have we answered it? We found the value, but we didn't interpret it in a complete sentence yet. So um, the 90th percentile is 6.16 centimeters, meaning that 90% of the oranges on this farm are less than or equal to 6.16 centimeters in diameter. All right, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.